One, prepare. We're not prepared. Check that off the list. Take two stays over. Not happening. Welcome to the best kind of worst. No, no one fucking cares. Everyone cares. Who? I care. Dick suck. So there I am in the parking lot. Underwear and a guinea. Hanging out in the backseat of a 7-Eleven. It's an ammo! We might die. So you want to talk about those lesbians? We need a bay update. I slept on the fucking tire! So 34. God, no, uh, no better way to come in than with Jackie Wilson. All alone today, Uncle Oli is out of the country right now. As am I. Uh, but he ends up in a, even a worse situation than I am in. So he is indisposed this week. Uh, I've, I, I think I heard from him yesterday, the day before. But... Um, it's like a nine-hour difference. Just uh, we tried to hook up potentially for him to call in, <clears throat> but it just didn't work out. The time difference makes it quite difficult. I think, it, like I said, it was nine hours, um, so that puts him, you know, in nighttime when I'm in daytime, and my days are usually filled with studying, and then you know his days are fi- are, are are chock full of filming in a different country. So um, I don't know how much I can give away. So I won't say a whole lot because um, they're still waiting for press releases and some authorizations and things like that to unveil the project that he's working on. But um, everyone here, we're just super excited for him, and uh, I'm just hoping it all goes well for him. And uh, he should be back next week ready and uh, gearing. Maybe I'll make him do the fucking episode alone. Let me drink some coffee because I'm so disrespectful. Oh, man. So this is going to be a, an absolute shit show of a podcast, um, mostly because Oli and I have a great dynamic. He kind of keeps me in line, so to speak, in the sense that I get off topic constantly, or I do the opposite and go on a tangent. There's no in-between. There's no in-between. I think I just got sick all of a sudden. <clears throat> But yeah, now I'm just here in my thoughts, talking to myself. This is going to be a disaster. I'm trying to work equipment that I don't really know how to work. Things are moving all over my screen. I got all of my peripherals open. And no one to keep me in line. So if this goes off the rails... mm, I'm going to have to apologize to some people. Well, let's just fucking get into it then. Biggest thing this week for me, baby, New England Patriots, world champs. We're back. I mean, are, are we back or did we never fucking leave? We're still here. Hashtag still here. Tom Brady's too old, says Max Kellerman of ESPN. He's on the bottom side of the hill. He's just going down and down and down. Stephen A. Smith from ESPN. They're going to get run over by Kansas City. We on the mountaintop, baby. We on the mountain top. The game was a defensive battle. Defensive battle through and through. A lot of people don't like that, though. A lot of people don't like that, though. Uh, viewership was down 8%, which isn't that big of a decrease, but it was the lowest uh, viewership in the last 10 years from what I'm reading. Defensive battle, 13-3 to was the final score. We scored uh, 10 points in the fourth quarter to close it out. Beautiful pass to Gronkowski. Caught down at the two-yard line. And then Sony Michelle runs it in for two yards out to put the X factor on it that put us up uh, put us up seven a little 
a field goal by Guskowski, put us up 13 with two to go. They missed a field goal with like 30 seconds to go. They were going to kick a field goal, then try onside. That was their only mathematical way of potentially tying the game. Missed the field goal, game over. MVP, Julian Edelman. He's just a little bit Jewish. He's just a little Jewish. That's his joke, not mine. Um, great game. Ten catches, 141 yards, I think it was. Um, this is a master class all the way through. Uh, it, it just showed – in the. In it, I, I like shootouts as the next person in the NFL. I like the high-scoring games, like the Monday Night Football game with Kansas, uh, Kansas City and L.A. I thought it was great, but I also – I'm a traditionalist. I do like the defensive battles. And it showed that, yes, Sean McVay, those type of coaches, the Cliff Kingsbury's, those are the future of the NFL, but they're still the wily veterans like Bill Belichick, greatest head coach of all time, that are there and they'll stop you at any moment. But, you know, Sean McVay, 32, 33, Jared Goff, 24. They got plenty of time. They'll be back. They'll win a couple. I don't doubt that. Todd Gurley. You know, Todd Gurley, no, uh, I think three carries in the first half. I, I, I think Sean McVay lost this game for them. Uh, he's a uh, you know head coaching genius at such a young age, but I think he was outmatched the whole game by the grizzled vet. The grizzled vet, baby. The grizzled vet. Uh, they like to run uh, – L.A. likes to run a lot of 11 formation, which is uh, three receivers, one tight end, one running back. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an old school – NFL formation. They like play actions. They like to run on first down, play action, second down, third down. They get the freedom. Every time they try to do something, every time they went play action, New England had an answer. They had an answer. Uh, we shut down Gurley. We shut down their offense. Uh, they looked pretty good in the fourth quarter, but by then it was already too late. And getting to the uh, the halftime show, I thought it was a above average. I thought it was above average. I think halftime shows end up being uh, underwhelming most of the time. Uh, my favorite was, uh, I think, 2004. I think it was Prince uh, in Miami. That was a fantastic performance. It was in the rain. Oh, just watching him do Purple Rain in the rain and playing the guitar and being Prince. Ah, damn. I love Prince. Uh, the halftime show this season, though, this year was marred with controversy all over the place. I've known for probably six or seven months that there was going to be Maroon 5. Uh, they originally wanted Rihanna, is what I was reading. Mo and most of the most of the the reports agreed that it was they wanted Rihanna. They definitely wanted a person of color, given the the political protests by the players and Colin Kaepernick. Uh, she turned them down. They went for uh, another couple of people, and then they offered it to Maroon Five. And they got word that they had offered it to Maroon Five, and a bunch of artists and people were telling them, "No, don't do it. Don't do it." They end up agreeing to do it, and I believe that was the NFL's way of trying to get an in with Cardi B because they had collaborated on, an, on a song prior, and they had asked her after Maroon 5 agreed to be the co-person, uh, and she turned them down. And then there's some rumors that she held the NFL up for a million dollars. Halftime performers don't get paid to do the show. You don't get paid for this. It's such a platform that being on there is your payment. So... You're not going to hold the NFL up for a million dollars to do something that everyone else is doing for free. They end up getting Travis Scott. Travis Scott got a bunch of flack. He deflected it, and him and Maroon 5 donated like $500,000 to um, a foundation to help out with uh, social justice. I'm really not sure. I just know they donated uh, $500,000 to some charities. Then they got Big Boy to be the third person. Big Boy from Outcasts, hometown native from, from Atlanta. So that was a good uh, – I thought Big Boy was great. I, I like Outcasts. I thought he was great on there. I didn't care for Travis Scott. They had, like, these digital flame balls when he came on and some SpongeBob mon montage. I just thought it was all stupid. Adam Levine looked great. I thought he sounded great. He wasn't really using an auto track from what I saw. Um, a lot of it was him singing naturally, which was great. Um, every time the camera got on him, he was in less and less clothes. Uh, so that's uh, that was interesting. Uh, a lot of people got upset that he um, he took his shirt off. He got down to nothing, just uh, his nipples and his dick root. It was just Adam Levine standing up there with his nipples and his dick root. 
For those of you that don't know what dick root is, it's like the muscles and the aperture of the pelvis as it goes down towards your dick, not necessarily the actual stalk. Uh, Justin Bieber's pastor is a second team All-American on the dick root scale. Fantastic dick root for a pastor. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <coughs> You know, they were upset with uh, the fact that his nipple was out and uh, his dick root was showing. You know, it, it all stems from the Mariah Carey incident with Justin Timberlake in the 2004 Super Bowl halftime show, I think, the one in Tampa. He accidentally exposed her breast, but she did have kind of like a tassel on it. It's all kind of weird, but th they were arguing equality. And look, I'm pro titty on TV, so, you know, the lawmakers, the FCC, the people that make these laws. There's still that demarcation that a, a man's chest is different than a woman's, and that's just that's just it. And you know, it's you know, I don't know. I'm I'm pro nudity on television, pro nudity, mm -hmm. pro bare body. I want more. But the problem you run into on a serious note is is the the television rating for the actual program. So if they're rating it uh, TV PG or 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 or, or TV fourteen, um, you know, there's not a whole lot you can say and do. Um, I know Netflix and Netflix FX and some other late night shows they get away with it because they label it TV whatever T V M A L N V you know but it is what it is. There's one point and <coughs> there's one point where Adam Levine was just singing right into the camera and uh, God damn I got lost in his eyes. I got lost in his eyes. He was just singing. I don't even know what the fucking song was. I didn't. In my mind, he was just singing. He was just, you know what? Hold on. Baby. Gonna get flagged by YouTube this week. Like every fucking week. Every fucking week we're flagged by YouTube. But when he was singing, when he was singing, I got lost in his eyes. Then Gladys Knight did the national anthem or um, America the Beautiful, one of them. I think she did the national anthem. And uh, she took some heat for it, obviously. Um, her quote was, we have a country that's worth standing for. And I thought that was a wonderful statement. I mean, well, Oli and I have been through this. We, 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 we we welcome people to protest whenever they feel the need or the want or the urge or, or they, th they feel passionate about something. But then there's the American flag, and I I feel like you should you should stand for it. It means a lot more than just you know our national anthem. That's it's like a credo to the military, and we only have our freedoms because they fought for them. You know, I know. Yeah, hundred years ago, great, I get it, but it's important. Um, CNN Don Lemon was like, is that going to hurt your career? Of course it's not. Of course it's not. It's Gladys Knight. Fuck off. Hey, fucko. That should have been her answer. Gladys, do you think it's going to hurt your career by singing the national anthem at the Super Bowl? Hey, fucko. I'm Gladys Knight. Ain't hurting shit. Suck on this tit. Oh, that's inappropriate. Grossly inappropriate. I apologize. The Super Bowl ads. So the Super Bowl ads this year cost, uh, on average, for 30 seconds, it was $5.3 million. Do you know what the fuck we could buy with $5.3 million right now? We could buy... We could fucking buy 2021 20, tickets on Virgin Galactic. We can go circle the fucking moon, me and... Mm, I don't know, 20 other people? Do I know 20 other people? No. Can I find 20 people? Yes. And strangers? Yes. Does it matter? No. I'm having a good time. We buy an island. We buy an island. 5.3 million fucking dollars. So what are the pros of the... What commercials were good? 
What commercials were good? I thought the Steve Carell Pepsi one was fantastic. The Flaming Hot Nacho Cheetos with the Backstreet Boys and Chance the Rapper was great. Uh, Budweiser was good. The one where they talked about renewable energy and how all their factories now are running on renewable uh, windmills. The Only because they had Bob Dylan playing in the background. The Burger King Andy Warhol commercial. I didn't really. I I just glanced and I did. It didn't click that it was Andy Warhol at first, and I was like, "This is bizarre. What a dumb fucking commercial." It's just a, a blonde headed guy eating a fucking Whopper. I don't get it. And then I was like, "Oh, it's Andy Warhol." Oh, and then they sent. Uh, I guess the, to some influencers and celebrities, they sent like an Andy Warhol Burger King box where they sent you a box uh, with a Whopper. Um, in a in a wig, you know, in a blonde wig. So that was interesting. It was funny. I saw it on Instagram a couple times this week. The bubbly, bubbled water, carbonated water. The Michael Bublé thing, where he tries to change the bubbly to Bublé. I thought that was pretty funny. And then we had the typical movies. We had Marvel, the Avengers, and we had Captain uh, Captain Marvel had a spot in Toy Story. I love Toy Story, but I didn't, that it, that <clears throat> those commercials, even for Marvel, they didn't make me want to see the movies any more than I naturally would, so I thought it was just a waste. The MVPs, though, the ones that I thought were absolutely spectacular, um, was the Google search commercial where they, it's, it, was, it was predominantly highlighting Google search and Google translate, um, and it was how they were able to use it in different countries so that people could communicate. And it talked about how the three most translated phrases, you know, every day are, <clears throat> how are you, thank you, and I love you. And I thought it was just a wonderful, wonderful commercial. Um, Microsoft is debuting a new um, adaptive controller for children with special needs, and they were unveiling it in this commercial, and I thought that was absolutely spectacular. Watching a child, a child, I'm sorry, <coughs> with special needs or a physical deformity, being able to play an Xbox like a normal child, um, and then having the actual children speak and talk about it, I thought was wonderful. One of the kids' quotes that I, I wrote down that I thought was spectacular was, "No matter how how I'm sorry, no matter how your body is, no matter how fast you are, you can play. That's really a good thing to have in this world." And I thought that just Summed up that entire commercial. I thought that was lovely. And uh, shout out to Microsoft. Good job. Uh, and then Amazon, they did a, <clears throat> they had a bunch of fucking commercials. Because for those of you that don't know, Amazon also owns the Washington Post. They had a bit. Amazon had like three or four. Uh, the one, the one I thought was wonderful was the failed Alexa peripherals. They had one with Harrison Ford and a dog with an Alexa dog collar, and the dog just keeps barking, and it keeps ordering more dog food. I thought that was, l I thought was hilarious. I died laughing. Commercials I thought were fucking terrible. Uh, the Tony Romo Skechers commercial, I just didn't get. Uh, Colgate, they made a big splash with Luke Wilson, the actor, brother of uh, Owen Wilson. I thought that was terrible. Hyundai, I, I, they, they were another one that, that uh, did a commercial with Jason Bateman that I thought was an absolute miss. Uh, Bud Light with the Game of Thrones crossover, I thought that was a miss. Uh, but the commercial I hated the absolute most was Zoe Kravitz in this ASMR commercial for, I don't even remember what beer. I can't tell you how much I hate ASMR. Uh, for those of you, I don't even know what the fuck that stands for, to be completely honest with everyone. Let's look it up. Don't have any help today, so we're just going to go to radio silence while I type in ASMR. Autonomous sensory meridian response. Awesome. It's essentially where, and this has become big on YouTube and Instagram, where people are just making noises and not speaking into a camera, or I'm sorry, the microphone. So it would be the equivalent of me like eating a bag of chips but putting my mouth completely on here so that you can hear the crunch. Or drinking water. You know, let's try this. Let me, I'm going to drink some coffee, see if we can emulate. You know what? Ah, no, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because I'm not a terrible person. Not a terrible person. That commercial was awful. It was just her chewing and drinking and popping a bottle. 
There was nothing good about that commercial. There's nothing good about it. It angers me. I don't know why. It, it bothers me, but some people really like it. I don't get it. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Why would you enjoy? Nothing pisses me off. I've noticed this about myself. Sidebar, see, I don't have Oli here, so now I'm just on a tangent. I've noticed this about myself. I love being bothered. I watch people, and I get angry every day, and I do it on purpose because I need to be aggravated all day long. I don't even know why. <coughs> I don't even know why. I have to be bothered. I have to be routinely bothered throughout the day or else it's not a good day for me. Nothing bothers me more than that ASMR. I'm sure plenty of things bother me more. But that's that's just a, a new thing here recently. I remember the Canadian called me one time and she did it into the phone. I just hung up on her. I didn't talk to her for uh, uh, like 24 full hours. Don't pick don't don't call me on the phone and 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 be crunching on a potato chip. Nothing pisses me off more than when I'm at a restaurant. <laughs> And someone's eating loud. Close your mouth. I don't. I don't have fucking manners. Obviously, obviously, it's it's a given. But close your mouth. Breathe through your nose. But I can't. My nose is broken. Get it fixed. So yeah. ASMR. That commercial is terrible. And, 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 and I think what aggravated me more is Zoe Kravitz. Mm, dime piece. Let's all be honest here. Dime piece. She's a dimey. And for her to be doing that, it just set me off. I had to go take a walk after watching it. <sighs> what else we got? Oh, yeah. The NFL rejected a couple of ads, and I didn't really, uh, NFL rejected one, and then CBS rejected one. <coughs> yeah, the NFL rejected uh, an, an ad from the veteran, the American Veterans Organization. Uh, they found it overtly political. Uh, the commercial ended with uh, with their slogan, hashtag, please stand. It's an obvious rebuttal to the Colin Kaepernick situation of him kneeling and other players kneeling for the national anthem and all the all the bullshit that that caused. <clears throat> I think it's kind of stupid uh, to suppress an art, uh, a commercial like that on that uh, under that guise because there's a lot of examples in the media of the media suppressing things from the conservative side, the right side, the right side, not the right side you know and it, it, it's examples like that because you know they allowed the Washington Post to run uh, an, a, a very liberal-esque ad on how democracy dies in darkness and how they're a good news source and they're reliable and it's not fake news and they're overtly liberal on most on most things so when you have an and, and, I mean hey they, they ran the Nike commercial all the time it didn't run during the Super Bowl. At least I didn't see it. But, you know, I don't know. It's just not a good look. I don't like them doing that. I mean, it's not like it's it's not like when they banned uh, some of the GoDaddy commercials for being overtly provocative. And I know they got a couple in 2007 that were banned. Um, Snickers got one banned for what it was. It was two dudes eating a Snickers from each side simultaneously, a la uh, the Lady and the Tramp. And they then they immediately realize what they're doing and they go and do a bunch of manly stuff you know to make sure oh we're manly men and people thought that was homophobic you know that stuff I'm I'm fine with I get that I, I, I get where you can make that connection you know that's that's that could offend someone but I don't believe you can offend someone by just saying hey we think you should stand we're veterans this is this is what we do we fight for your freedom you know they, they banned a commercial a bunch of years back where, a t oh, a 2009 PETA commercial where it was just women that were mimicking, making love to vegetables. Like, I, that, that should have played. That should have played. That, 
that offends me that they did not run that. I'm offended that they didn't run that because I mm, want to see it. Mm, pro vegetable. And then CBS rejected a Nine Line commercial. Nine Line is a is a military owned and operated clothing company. They're pretty conservative and they're pretty right leaning on most of their things politically, but they do give back to a ton of charities. They uh, rejected it based on the claim that they thought that they couldn't afford to run them ad, but yet they posted revenue of twenty five million last year, and for the last few years it's been north of twenty. <coughs> so they're flush with cash, and um, this commercial I actually got to see. Uh, they posted it uh, on YouTube, so I was able to, able to see it. Basically, if you're, it is a another rebuttal to the Nike Colin Kaepernick commercial. If you saw the Colin Kaepernick commercial, Colin ends it with, so don't ask if your dreams are crazy, ask if they're crazy enough. Nine Line goes with, don't ask if your loyalty is crazy, ask if it's crazy enough. Um, it was narrated by Benghazi survivor Marine Mark Geist. Geist is quoted in the commercial saying, some people think you're crazy for being loyal, defending the Constitution, standing for the flag, then I guess I'm crazy. And again, it's a censorship of the right and the conservative, and look, Everyone has the right to feel that they should, that you should stand. I think you should stand. That's my personal stance. I, if you want to protest, protest on the weekends or on, the, on Saturdays or, or, or when it's not convenient for you. I think it's very convenient to kneel during the flag during an NFL game. Now, I have a real issue with that. I, that that's my biggest issue. Uh, one, you're, you're shitting on the flag. And, and two, it's, it's, just, it's, it's a protest of convenience. I don't see them protesting outside of that. Now, I could be wrong by that. And then, and if I'm wrong, email us, and and I'll, I'll I will I will immediately redact my statement or change it up. But I don't see very many protests from the players specifically outside of Sunday games. And if they were doing that, they were doing both. Then I I know for sure they feel that strongly about it. I'm all for it. Knock yourself out. I don't agree with it. But knock yourself out. But if you're just doing it out of convenience, I got a real issue. And the fact that you won't allow the opposite side to show this is why I think you should stand. I think that's real shitty by the NFL. But I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm not surprised. They, they want this to go away. They want the players to stand, but they also want the issue to go away. You know, you can't have it both ways. And I don't think there's anything wrong with healthy, disagreeing dialogue. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And then the last thing from the commercials is the Washington, the Washington Post posted a commercial. <clears throat> it was about basically debunking or attempting to debunk fake news. And it was just bad. At the end, they had a little slogan. It said, democracy dies in darkness and the need for news. And um, it was narrated, I think, by Tom Hanks. <coughs> I think that's the voice that I I heard. Um, but the Washington Post is, is, is owned by Jeff Bezos and Amazon. So they are notorious for reporting on things that aren't factual, aren't true, and then when they need to report on something that is factual, they end up not. So Washington, 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 this is what happens when you have to speak for 26 minutes straight. The Washington Post doesn't have the best track record with reporting. Um, you know, it's, it's not the New York Post. The New York Post does a pretty fair job, I think, for most, you know, I mean, mainstream media, like actual print media, like newspapers and magazines, things like that, it's dying. So I think the New York Post does a pretty decent job. Wall Street Journal does a pretty decent job. You know, but the WAPO, as, it's, as, it, as most people call it now, WAPO hasn't had that great of a track record. And then to come out and say that we, we are factually accurate and we do our job, it's not really sometimes the case. And then to spend, you know, that much money on an ad when Huffington Post, BuzzFeed, um, and Vice, I think, are all, you know, looking at layoffs or have conducted layoffs. Their you know, revenue streams are down. You know, WAPO got in trouble for um, <clears throat> for the Michael Cohen stuff. They, uh, they were adamant that Michael Cohen had proof. Um, the, not Michael Cohen, the, the Mueller report. They, had, they, they were adamant that they had proof that Michael Cohen was coerced by Donald Trump to lie in Congress, and it just ended up not being true. They, they, they were adamant they had factual evidence, and they didn't. 
they didn't. They had to actually retract their statements across the board. Uh, and they just did it again, uh, whew, what is it, about 10 days ago with the Covington Catholic High School kids. They were bashing those kids on their uh, on their website and in the newspaper. And it took them all the way, I think, till Tuesday. This this happened on a Friday evening. The Twitter storm was Saturday. And by Sunday, everybody was kind of retracting their stuff. It took them almost till Tuesday to retract anything regarding that. So, I mean, it was a, it was a very well-done commercial. I just don't know. I don't know what it did for them, you know. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know why I'm coughing. If you're the average, and I mean the average is you, you read articles or you read the news every, maybe once a week, then maybe that'll influence you. Maybe that'll influence you to um, read more Washington Post. It might. It might. I'm not saying it's a bad publication. <clears throat> more coffee. Disrespectful. Oh, but I don't, I don't, for me, I, I, I tend to, I start my morning off with the news, <clears throat> better person. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, no, I, I like to read the news when I get up in the morning. Most people get up in their, they look at Instagram or they beat off, whatever. I like to just read some news and get my day going. And uh, WAPO's not one of the things I read because it's just, it's stupid sometimes. Um, but. You know, <clears throat> I read CNN and Fox News. I'm going to list them all. All right, so let's get into the week. Uh, let's start off with uh, Wow Jenny Fairley from the Jersey Shore. It looks like she's getting a divorce from her husband, Roger Matthews. Uh, he was caught on their nest cam, shoving her into the floor. It looks like he might have punched her, too. Um, I don't want to confirm that. I did see the video, but I, I really, honest to goodness, can't make it out. So I, I, I don't want to say something that he did not do. Uh, he did push her to the ground, this domestic violence. Uh, we here on the show, we are not okay with any of that. I, I, I don't understand putting your hands on a woman, and I don't think I ever will. I've, I've given up trying to figure out. I try to put myself in the shoe, like, how do you get to that point? And I just can't, and I can't, and I've given up trying. <sighs> it just it pisses me off. It, not, it angers me. It pisses me off. Uh, and then he was... He got on his personal Instagram. He was filming a story with while holding his youngest kid. He's like two. And he's just like, yeah, yeah, I'm cheating on your mom because she's a bitch. And uh, I've been cheating because I'm an alpha man because he's all buff and bullshit. The guy's a douchebag. Fuck off. Um, I hope she got all of her kids out of that house. Um, I hope everything goes well. I hope he gets charged with domestic violence. I hope she goes through with it. I hope they don't get back together. Um and, you know, a lesson here is you can have arguments, you can have disagreements. It should never escalate to that level, kind of like the Ronnie Magro situation, the other cast member. Uh, Jenny Fair is from the Jersey Shore, by the way. Should have started with that. Mm, fucking stupid. Um, but another cast member on the Jersey Shore, Ronnie Magro, I think that's his last name. He's constantly fighting with the, his baby's mama. She she drug him with her Mercedes. He was like trying to get out of the car or some shit. And she just drove off and drug him, I don't know, 100 feet or some shit. He broke his arm, got all cut up. But, um, you know, those things need to stay off social media and away from your children. You know, you can have disagreements. You can have arguments, like I said. And if it ever gets to the point where it's turning physical or it's turning vile, like, oh, I'm cheating on your mom. She's a bitch. Fuck her. Keep your children away from it. It's not the place. You just look like a piece of trash. You look like a piece of trash. Don't do it. Um, I hope he gets what he has coming to him, and I hope uh, hope she gets out of all this unscathed. Ugh. What else? What else? What are we going to talk about? <coughs> Ugh. I think I'm coming down with something. Mom, nasally. I should just end this fucking thing right now. Uh Virginia Governor Ralph Northam. They got a copy of his of his yearbook, and on his page, he is uh, allegedly in blackface, standing next to someone in a KKK hood and robe. And apparently, his shirt or hoodie or sweatshirt that he had on, um, it says KKK on it. The photo was a uh, eight nineteen eighty four yearbook during his last year at Eastern Virginia Medical School. 
Oh, oh, what a piece of trash. He apologized, uh, but did not detail which of the picture and picked one, which one of the individuals was him. Hold <laughs> I don't know which one is me. I'm one of them. I'm either the one dressed up like a KKK Klansman or I'm the guy wearing the sweatshirt and blackface. Which one would you rather be? Which one would you rather? Which one's more offensive? The obvious answer is the KKK hood. I think blackface is more of an aggravation to most um, most black individuals. Uh, it's it's abhorrently racist, correct, right? But I think the big thing is it's just abhorrently aggravating, right? Because it's something that you know I shouldn't do, right? But they do it anyways, right? So I think it's more of an aggravation. So obviously it's the cape, but I don't know which one was me. Uh, people have been calling for him to resign. A couple of Democrats went out and were like, hey, let's not rush to judgment. Uh, 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 let's pump the brakes. Let's, let's burn a time out here. Let's not rush to judgment, you fuck. You got Kathy Griffin 10 days ago wanting to dox a 16-year-old and all you fuckers are on top of it going, yeah, let's, and Raison Sar is going, that's a, I've never seen a more punchable face. Mm, you adult? You, you, you adult? But let's not jump to conclusion when someone from our party is standing there in blackface and or a white hood and a white robe. Huh. <laughs> let's not jump to fucking conclusions. Of course we're going to jump to a conclusion, right? So what's the takeaway? What do we do? Do you quit? Do you resign like everyone's saying? I don't know. It was in 1984. I'm a firm believer that people do change. I'm a firm believer in you do things as a child. or you, And when I say child, I mean under the age of 30 or 27. You know, when you're a kid. When you're, when you're growing up, you do things. And a lot of times, I think kids do things that are, that are outlandish or inappropriate or egregious in order to arise in order to um, get an arousal out of other kids, in, in, in not in a sexual way, but a, a, a comedic way or a popularity way. Like, you want to be seen. You, you want to be seen. You want to you know, you wanna, you wanna laugh. You want someone to laugh with you, not at you, right? So I think uh, sometimes people do things when they're younger that they soon regret in a few years when that type of, <clears throat> high school or collegiate camaraderie dies. And then you go, oh, this is stupid. This is stupid. I don't know why I did this. Because I don't feel this way. You know, it's very, it's very, I think it's very possible that, that, that Ralph Northrum isn't a racist at all. I think that's very plausible. It doesn't look good. And then when you say, I don't know which one am I, that, that's even worse you know, your your colleagues coming to your aid and going, yeah, we shouldn't jump to conclusion. Again, that's that's oh, that's three strikes already. So what do we do with Ralph Northrum? I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. Because that's what the whole penal system is, right? Right, you commit a crime and you go to prison and then you serve your time, Right? And then when your time is up, you are deemed rehabilitated or ready to venture out into the world. And at that point, you are forgiven. You did your time, right? So what is, what is the penance, right? It's no different than the Catholic Church and confession. I confess my sins. I, I beat off today. I didn't go to church on Sunday. You know, I had immoral thoughts. I couldn't stop thinking about titties. And I'm being coy about this, but that's the reality of a, of a child, right? child going to confession, you know? And then they tell you you do 10 Hail Marys, 10 Our Fathers. And then you do those, or you do five and five, or it's just five Our Fathers, or whatever. I, I think I had one time a priest told me to buy uh, my mother a candy bar. Mm, didn't do it. Mm, stupid. A fucking candy bar? 
I just want to say some fucking prayers. I didn't do it. I didn't buy or anything. Just went to confession the next week when the priest was, when the normal priest is back, reconfessed all my sins, confessed that I didn't do that, and they, he hit me with the 10 and 10. That's the worst you can get. And we we're good to go. I was redeemed, right? I'm trying to be funny, but that's the reality. We have to find ways of redemption. So what do we do with a situation like this? Do we, do we, should he resign? 1984. I don't know. <coughs> I don't know. And there's also a track record of putting housing developments and things like that in lower income areas and kind of displacing the ghettos. Um, so there's a lot more into it. So there, he very well might be a racist, you know? Maybe that's just a coincidence. I, I don't I don't know enough. I'm not I don't live in the state of Virginia. Don't really care. <laughs> Virginia. Raise your hand if you're from Virginia. Said no one. Um, so I don't know. You know, I'm deeply sorry, he said, but I don't know. It doesn't look like uh doesn't look like he's going to resign, so that's that doesn't look like it'll be an option. So It'll be interesting how that plays out and how he survives this. I mean, his behavior has been absolutely bizarre. So, And I don't like the whole white privilege thing. I mean, he, he might be. I don't know. But, you know, that in itself is racism. It's, you know, it's racism. It's blaming a race for a certain attribute, you know. I think we all have privilege in our own, in our own right. I think everyone has a little bit of privilege. I just don't think we always see it sometimes. Yeah, man, I go all over the place. One minute I'm cracking a fucking joke, and the next minute I'm being all serious. Mm, schizophrenic. Oh, man. I guess we should, st since I'm on mm, politics, I guess we'll stay on it. <coughs> big uh, the big thing this election this election coming up in two years is going to be how radical do the Democrats want to go it's weird because if Oli was here right now he would shut this entire argument down he's not a big uh, you know big guy into politics and uh, rightfully so rightfully so I, I actually agree with his thought process on it um but it's great to read. God, it's like a soap opera. Um, yeah, so in two years, we'll, we'll know probably in the next six months. They've, they've got it. I think they've got it narrowed down to a handful of candidates. You got uh, Talisa Gabbard. Um, AOC probably is going to try to run something. Uh, Bernie's technically independent. Hillary looks like she might run. Joe Biden probably know within the next month. Um, Michael Avignati, Stormy Daniels' his lawyer. <laughs> well, that guy's a fucking idiot. Um, well, the big thing is how, for me, when I look at this election, I think, oh, how far radical do the Democrats want to go? Because the Republican Party went real radical with Trump, right? He's not a, he's, I, he's, he's, he's Democratic most of his life, right? But because he knew he couldn't win the, the ticket against Hillary, Right? That's weird. He probably couldn't beat Hillary for the ticket, but he beat her in the election when he was a, when he was on the opposite side. Right. So he goes to the Republican Party. He runs as a Republican, as, as a Republican candidate, wins the ticket, and then wins the presidency. Right. But how f does the Democratic Party fight fire with fire? Do they go full radical? And I think you're seeing that with people like uh, AOC and their incessant talking about socialism. And I don't think socialism, and this is my personal opinion, I don't think social, socialism is a good thing for our country. There are, there are aspects of it that are, that are appealing. But as a whole, it's just not sustainable for a country with, that, with this many people. We have way too many other issues that we have would have to tie up. She's on this campaign to, to criminalize, to, to demonize billionaires. A 70% tax on people that make more than $10 million. That's stealing. And I know you're thinking, well, what the fuck does it matter? They're making more than $10 million. And I, you're right. 
you're absolutely right. That Alexandria, your campaign was solely was funded all by these same people you're trying to demonize. You cannot demonize someone for the amount of money they make each year. You cannot. That's wrong. That is absolutely wrong. You ran your campaign through social media and donations, and now you want to demonize these same people? You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. Yeah, let's demonize these people. Where's the incentive to work? Where's the incentive to work harder, to strive for better? You're going to take that all away? You're going to take away that entire incentive? I'll just lay back. I'll lay back because it's going to come to me either way. You're just stealing. It's theft. You're stealing. But anyways, I'm getting super fucking off topic. Socialism. That's where I was going with this. This is where I need Oli. God damn it. You let me go down a wormhole, now I'm demonizing socialism. Didn't want to do that. It's not what my intention was. Um, a Panera Bread. There's been a, there's, since like 2009, there have been like six or seven Panera Breads that have been labeled as Panera Cares. And they're socialist Paneras. Meaning that you go in there, you walk in, and you order whatever you want. And then you choose to pay what you want. So you go in there and you get a Frontega chicken with a side of broccoli cheddar and a bread bowl, a, a Diet Coke and a dick suck. And then you basically tell them what you want to pay. So it could be $1, it could be $2. You could offer to pay 100 You could say, I don't want to pay. And they will hand you the food. Well, they've all closed, finally. They were only making it back about 60%, and they were unindated. Um, surprisingly, although they did have a large demographic of homeless individuals in the areas that they were in coming there and eating, it was college students walking in there and loading up on food and not paying at all. The average college student wasn't paying anything. They were just going there, like if it was an assembly line, eating the food and then leaving. Yeah, instead of that, what, the, what the article is saying, instead of making the food like making the like one or two dollars, making like a dollar menu like a McDonald's or things like that, where it's like quote unquote subsidized menus, they just let people pay whatever they want. And the one in the, I think the last one, I think the last one is in Boston. The last two are Boston and Portland, and the one in Portland is finally closing this week. <clears throat> it was so bad from the college students that they had to actually limit the amount of. Well, it was so bad from the college and the homeless individuals that they actually limited the amount of um, meals that a homeless person could get to just a handful a week. And it was, um, article was just saying how this is kind of a representation of the, of, of the socialist agenda in the U.S. and how it's n it's, it isn't potentially sustainable. And I know there's examples like Norway, Denmark, um, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, and a few others. <clears throat> but these, are the, these are countries have a population the size of um, yeah, Pennsylvania. Yeah, Pennsylvania or Ohio. That would be the, the, the equivalent, the population. It's, it's self-sustainable. They had the means to self-sustain. We have, I can't even tell you how many people in the U.S., you know. So I thought that was interesting. I didn't even know these Paneras existed. And when I was reading this, I, I really, like, the socialism aspect, that was interesting, but what, 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 caught my attention was the fact that the college students would go there and eat and not pay anything. I worked two jobs when I was in uh, college. Uh, Oli did the same thing. Oli pulled student loans. I luckily didn't have to. I was able to afford to pay out of pocket because I lived at home. He was paying rent because he's from Massachusetts, right? So if he wasn't paying rent, maybe he could have paid out of pocket too <clears throat> and not had to carry such a, a hefty student loan debt. I Obviously, went into hundreds of thousand of dollars in debt and now medical school, but I couldn't, I couldn't fathom walking in there and ordering food and not paying something. I, I, I could. I, there's no way I could have done that. And I don't know how college students said. I mean, and, and don't get me wrong. I know college students sometimes have it pretty rough. <coughs> but I, don't, I just, it blows my mind. When I read it, I assumed that they were closing because of the amount of homeless individuals eating there every day. That was a that was a, a large number, but it was it was the college students that were just bogging it all down. Uh, 
I don't know. I think we, we want things a lot of the times, but we don't want to help and facilitate these things. You know, our society has become such a handout society. It's great. It's, it's scary at times because I don't I don't know if they notice that they're doing it. I don't I don't know if they're they're they. I don't know if they they realize the repercussions or, or, or for every for every reaction for every action there's a reaction and there's causation. I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying anymore. I don't know if they understand the repercussions of 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 wanting just to have your hand out sometimes. I see that with a lot of people my age. Millennial. Oh, Chicago police. Everybody probably heard about uh God, I'm going to fuck up this guy's name. Empire's actor and singer, Josie Smollett. He was leaving a subway about 2 o'clock in the morning in downtown Chicago. And he stated that he was attacked by two men wearing MAGA hats, screaming, this is MAGA country. And they put a noose around his neck in the middle of the attack. A lot of different reports came out. One said that he went to the high, was hospitalized. Another one said that um, all kinds of stuff. He came out and I don't know what show it was or what concert or what event he was at, but he got on stage and they gave him an opportunity to clear up some of the things. He said that he, uh, well, for one, first off, he fought back. Mm. Good for you. He said that they did put a noose around his neck that they were, you know, throwing out racial and homophobic slurs. He is uh, openly gay. Um, his ribs were not broken, as the one of the articles stated. They were bruised. He did not go to the hospital, but he did go to the go to a physician who ordered a rest. Um, when I heard about the story, uh, it was on my docket last week to kind of talk about it. But I didn't want to, because I didn't want to talk about it too early, because I, I didn't think he was lying, but I didn't think that it was being completely truthful. I think that there was, uh, I think some of the story is going to come out to be inaccurate or an over-exaggeration. That's not to say he's a bad person. He seems like a lovely person. I actually listened to a little bit of him singing. He's wonderful. I've never seen Empire. <coughs> but on all accounts, he seems to be a, a, a budding superstar. Yeah, they were screaming, welcome to MAGA country. Is that, that's what he said. Now, my, the first thing that tipped me off that, that something was awry is he said that during the attack, he was on the phone actively with his agent when police asked him for his phone and his phone records, he denied them access to that. Now, there could be reasons for that. I, I, I know I, for one, don't want um, a random person snooping through my phone <laughs> nudes. Um, so maybe there's something like that. He doesn't want people going through his personal information, his personal phone. I know everybody's got their credit cards on their phones now unless you live in the <laughs> Stone Age. <laughs> Holy... Um, when I don't have him, man, I say, um, a lot. Damn it. I quit saying that. Yeah, they, uh, oh yeah, and they, the, during the attack, they poured an unspecified chemical, which, um, all, I, everything I've read, um, is saying it was bleach. Now, do I think he was potentially assaulted in Chicago? Yes, I do. Do I think that they wrapped a noose around his neck? I'm not sure. And I'll tell you why. It's because on the police report, they state that the noose was some kind of like, almost like packaging twine that looked, that in the police report it says, um, <clears throat> looked like it had just come right from the wrapper. So it hadn't been used before. It was very new. And uh, he was actively wearing it when police got there. If I was to walk down the street and someone put a noose around my neck and beat the shit out of me, um, and I had to call the police, the first thing I would do is take the noose off my neck. 
So there's a flag for me. And a lot of this is just my personal opinion. Um, here it is again. A neighbor has claimed that he saw, quote, a redneck-looking man was loitering around Smollett's building apartment. A redneck-looking man. I mean, what what is what is that's at two o'clock in the morning in the pitch dark? You can you can pick out a redneck-looking man. I, I just for that. I mean, it's when you just pick the most common word. Like, okay, I can't say a Trump supporter or Republican, so what can I say? I'm gonna say a redneck. You know. No cameras around the area. There's a lot of cameras in Chicago because Chicago is a high crime city. There's cameras everywhere. They've yet to see any footage of an assault. They did ID two people uh, that were in the vicinity. Uh, but I believe they have checked out. Uh, I, I could be inaccurate on that because oh, there's a lot of different articles on this. The police have subpoenaed his phone records, so we should be able to pinpoint if he was actually speaking to his agent. Because that's a game changer. If you're on the phone with your agent, then you subpoena the agent. Agent's got to go under oath to say that he heard the assault. If he didn't, you're lying. If you got the phone records and it shows that he wasn't on the phone with the agent, you're lying. What else did you lie about? The police chief has come out and said that if anything in the investigation is found false, that he'll be held accountable for that. Because I think their nose is out too. I think their nose is up. You know? The police arrived around 45 minutes after the attack, and he still had the, the rope around his neck. I don't know. The Sun-Times in Chicago reported... From the police report, the rope appeared to be a thin clothesline, which police believe came straight out of the package before it ended up around Smollett's neck. No video of the rednecks with a rope. He also says that during the attack, he was still able to hold onto a Subway sandwich. That's awesome. Uh, don't eat at Subway. Ever. Like, uh, if you eat at Subway, I don't trust you. That's disgusting. Also, Jared. And fucks kids. I just, I don't know. There's a lot of things in this story. And I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever know the full truth. A lot of times we get caught up. We get caught up in this. In, in, in this. In this era of social justice warriors. And I think we have to be really careful at times. I think there are times where we should absolutely go full in, you know, for things like human rights, not male or female rights, but human rights across the board. There is no gender that is better than one, right? We should go in full in for human rights, for equality, for inclusion. The simple fact of just including people. You know, these are the things that we should be fighting for. And a lot of time we just fight for one singular thing. You know, and especially during times of, of elections. You know, as a high, again, hypothetical. If this kid does get attacked and he thinks to himself, well, maybe, maybe I embellished it a little bit. That way, you know, my voice is heard in this political landmine that is, you know, 2019 politics. Again, hypothetical. Maybe, may, may, I hope this happens exactly the way he says it. I really do. Because then you go, this guy's honest, this guy's genuine. This guy's polarizing now. He's a beacon of light for people that think that, think, think that America is so dark right now. I don't personally think it's that dark. I think it's dark at times. But for people that really feel that this is such a dark time for our nation, he could be a beacon of light. So I really, I hope that everything he says is true. That doesn't mean I'm advocating for people to go beat up a bunch of gays. No, of course not. Those people are horrible, and they do exist. I don't think they exist on the level that the media or the left would want you to think. 
like, I don't think wearing a MAGA hat makes you a horrible person. I don't think it's like Alyssa Milano. She advocates for a ton of stuff, and I agree on a lot of things she advocates for, but then during the Covington Catholic thing, she said, wearing a MAGA hat is the equivalent of a white hood in the KKK. No, no, no. That's abhorrently inaccurate. They sell these hats all throughout the streets in D.C. It's a hat that shows support for a political candidate. That hat does not make you a racist. It's no different than wearing a t-shirt that says Hillary, blah, 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 2016. It's no different. What the difference is, is if you are a racist, no matter whether you wear the hat or not, you're just a racist. If you're a homophobe, you're a homophobe whether you wear that hat or not. I don't think wearing that hat makes you a racist. That little 16-year-old kid ain't in the KKK. Let me tell you what, if I was that 16-year-old kid, there's no telling what would have happened. To be called cracker, to be called the N-word, to be, to be threatened with your life. And then to have Nathan Phillips walk up to you and play a drum in your face. And he's the fucking prick, right? He's the one in the KKK. He's the face of white of white supremacy is what most people on Twitter were calling the face of white supremacy. Fuck off. Back on my tangent. I woke up. This episode's going to be all over the fucking place. Massachusetts woman uh, will go to prison after she urged her boyfriend through via text to kill himself. And he did. Massachusetts woman must serve prison time after urging her boyfriend to kill himself in a series of text messages and phone conversations. The court ruling rejected an appeal by who cares. She was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter for the 2014 suicide of 18-year-old Conrad Roy II when he was 17 years old. She's going to get 15 months in jail. She'll do, cut that in half, she'll do seven and a half with good, with good behavior, probably six. <coughs> serves a right. Serves a right. I, I think she, she deserves more. I think she deserves more. I've never ever in my life had the urge to text someone something that egregious via text message, even if I was mad at them. I don't even particularly like texting. My, my, my new thing in the last like probably years, people text me, and I just won't respond. A day or two will go by. Text messaging is so impersonal. But on the flip side, I don't like talking on the phone either. So I think it's just me. But uh, it came down from the Massachusetts Supreme Court. So, she is going to prison. Yeah, I, the, we need more of this. We need, we need to hold people more accountable for the things that they say to others. Uh, verbal and cyber and text bullying and, and, and this culture that, we're, that we are in these days, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. You get on Twitter, you're bullied. You get on Instagram, you're bullied. You get on uh, face space, you're bullied. No one deserves that. No one deserves to be told repeatedly that they should kill themselves. Why? Why, because you think you're better than them? I'm, I'm no better than the street derelict on the corner. The difference between him and I is I got a chance to go to school. Maybe he didn't get that opportunity. Or she. We got to quit that shit where we try to be better than everyone. No one's better than anyone. We're all different variations of the same. We're all equal. We got to treat each other better. It's like the antithesis of this episode been all over the place probably should just call it while we're behind I tried my best to stay organized and stay on one topic but my brain is like a fucking flow chart there's always two options and which one my, my brain picks I don't ever know but uh it's probably time for me to bid you a farewell oh well hold on hold on pump the brakes 
think we got Oli trying to call. Hold on. <laughs> what the fuck? You're live, son. Live. I didn't tell people where you were. You're live. What's up? I didn't tell people where you were. What? I didn't tell people, like, I just said you were somewhere in the eastern side of the globe. <laughs> the eastern side of the globe. I didn't know how much I could give away. Or here. Oh, it don't matter. I'm in the, in the Emirates, son. The Emirates. Emirates. The Emirates. He's, Emirates. He's on, on that, that, he's on that, op- he's on that op- Palm op- Island. You're on that Palm Island. Palm Island? I don't, I don't know what that means. I don't know. It's that island that they made that looks like a palm tree. Man, dude, they're, actually, they're, they're, that was the first thing I commented on when we got here. Uh, I was there's literally driving down the highway and it's just all palm trees. Yeah, it's like it makes sense because it's, a, I guess, a tropical, it's not a tropical place. It's hot enough for palm trees. Yeah. But uh, I didn't think about it, you know? Did they give you the pamphlet where it tells you all the, all the laws? Like you can't like walk on the sidewalk with your shirt off? No, they, they didn't give me a pamphlet. Uh, um, uh, they didn't really tell you anything. You got to look the laws up for yourself. I did uh-huh. not walk on the sidewalk with the shirt off. I felt weird even walking on the sidewalk. There's not a lot of people that walk around, at least not uh, in certain areas and certain times. There, uh, today's what Friday, so yeah, yeah. it's actually there. Um, their their weeks are Sunday to Thursday, so Friday, Saturday are their their weekend. So it was a lot busier today with people out and about and doing stuff. That's weird. But yeah, I mean. I think I think for you know the states and other countries, you know Sunday is uh, is, is a religious thing, you know, so no, yeah, no work on Sunday. Whereas you know they're they're very religious here with, um, you know, being Muslim, but I think uh, Sunday doesn't have a significance to them. Hmm. So, that's that. That's you know, that. Oh. Sunday's the, technically the first day of the week. It makes oh, that's God's to day. Start work on the first day of the week. That's, huh? God, that's God's rest day. Come on now. Hey, not their God. That's not God's their day God. off. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They working. Not their day off. <laughs> working on the day off. See anything uh, crazy? Uh, yeah. Huh? See anything crazy? See anything crazy? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's called the Emirates. <laughs> This whole place is crazy. Honestly, though, it's, it's really nice. It's fucking... Oh, God, that's loud. Um, it's beautiful here. Everything is super nice, super clean, very expensive, a lot of money here. Um, everybody's actually pretty nice. I don't think I've met one local that doesn't also speak English. Yeah, it's real uh, common in that area. Yeah. Everything's a little pricey. I'd imagine. Um, but not not terrible, but we've all I mean, we've also been eating at hotel restaurants and stuff like that. So, you know, that's to be expected. I don't know. Um, you got but, uh, you got oil money? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there, we drive by the, the prince's palace every friggin' day, you know, just uh yeah. Oil. There's there's just massive apparently the this hotel that's right down the road from the one that we were staying at. It's apparently the, the the most expensive hotel ever built. It was like three billion dollars. The thing is, it's just ridiculously huge. The uh, uh, the entrance way has this big ass. Uh, it's not a gate, but it's like a archway. Mm-hmm. Huge, just huge. It's stupid money out here. Everything is so big. We went to um, we went to this uh, huge famous mosque today. Mm-hmm. Um, after after we got finished working, we went over to this mosque. Uh, got like one of the the high uh, high leaders there, I guess. Um, uh, and it's just massive. I mean, thousands of people come in and out of there easily. I mean, we waited in line to just get through, get up to the top. Uh, you can't wear tank top shorts. Uh, um, women have to be completely completely covered. Um, it, it was nice though. I mean, it was just massive. I mean, the parking lot is underneath. Um, and it's just, 
I don't know, it's just pretty crazy. It's so huge. Everything is made of marble. Ain't no the titties. Wall, there's like gold everywhere, marble on everything. Just massive. I'll have, to, I'll have to show you some of the pictures I got. It's pretty cool. That's good. That's good. The, yeah, it was interesting to see. But, uh, you know, you know your boy out here getting sunburned like a motherfucker, though. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dog. Come back all tanned up. That's that, that white face. I got them raccoon eyes, you know, and them, yeah. them tan lines uh, from them sunglasses, you know? You got that, you got that hard farmer's tan. Yeah. That, that year round. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's been pretty good. We're actually going to go do a, um, tomorrow's our last day of uh, work. And then Sunday we'll have off. And then we don't fly up. Monday, so Sunday we're going to go do this like desert safari, so basically they take us out in this like SUV, I don't, I don't know exactly, the picture that we saw, the one picture we saw had like an SUV, but he, the guy was explaining to us, you basically go like off-roading in the desert, um, going up dunes and shit and going crazy in, in like a four-wheel uh, truck or something or an SUV or whatever the hell it is they have and then uh, uh, oh, see you so then there's a barbecue and oh you ride a motherfucking camel and uh, then we can go like sandboarding um, and then they have the barbecue and it's at sunset and then they turn off all the lights out in the desert, uh, and then you can, like, fucking watch the stars and shit, and then they take you back. Hey. Sounds pretty cool. And it's like 100 bucks a person. Hey. Not even. Fuck you. Yeah. What? Fuck, fuck yeah. Fuck who? You. Me? Sounds amazing. Why? Sounds amazing. You want to ride a camel? Yeah. That sounds great, doesn't it? Hell <laughs> yeah. Like 100 bucks. You can't not do it. I mean, come on now. That's like a, yeah. You know, that's too easy. Like Jackie Chan not doing fucking karate or something, you know? Exactly. It's racist, but it's right. <laughs> Whatever that means. Does he even do karate? Don't know. Don't know. Not Korean. <clears throat> Don't care. He's, uh, he's Japanese, so yeah, Japanese originated in, uh, karate originated in Japan. Japanese karate. Karate. Yeah. Get it right. So you would you would be correct. Now, if I'm wrong and he's not Japanese, then mm, racism. Yeah, I think you're wrong. I'm actually sure he's Chinese. Bro, I don't know. The Canadian posted a photo. I, don't, of her I really kid. don't know either. But the Canadian posted a photo sure. of her family, and then she re- she literally wrote, you know, blank blank me thinks that they, we all look alike. And I was like, I never said that. <laughs> Did you comment because you do? No, that, that was her caption for the goddamn photo. No, but I'm saying, but did you comment on the photo and say, because you do? No, you don't double down. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I double down, babe. When do you not double down? Her, her, You're supposed to double down. Mama Ching thinks daddy's funny. Daddy needs to keep it that way. <laughs> maybe she would find that funny. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe I'll go back. I'm going to, I'll revisit it. <laughs> I'll revisit it. Oh, fuck. <sighs> well, what's good? Another, good? another man just, just, just were was about to wrap up this fucking episode telling people how you oh, ain't going to call right in. in. Time, huh? And then all of a sudden, right in time. all of a sudden, I told you Jesus I don't sleep. I got that good timing. Huh? I told you God don't sleep. Got that good timing, son. Because yep. it's not Sunday. Yep. <laughs> no, but, just... uh, yeah. About it. Talking a bunch oh, of been, bullshit been a on good week. That's Yeah, good. yeah. For a little, little episode by yourself. Yeah, it was fucking awful. 
I don't like. I have so much more respect for people that do this shit alone. Cause like, it took me like thirty five minutes to get comfortable, and then I just started rambling. Yeah. Cause well, you just start. You I mean, just start. We've done. We've done quite a few episodes, but we always do them together. So it's it's also completely different, you know. Well, it's like when I start talking about something, and then, like as you're saying it out loud, you're hearing yourself, and then you're like, oh, I don't know if I feel that way. Like that's what I thought. <coughs> And then it's like, and then you I just start talking shit. Yeah, and then I do like a one eighty, and then it's like, oh no, just. I do feel this way. And I then you know, this. then I go super inappropriate, and then it's like, you know, <laughs> then I got to apologize. You know. Always. always. You know, pe- people got mad. People got mad at Adam Levine for his halftime show. A lot of people said it sucked. I didn't think it was that bad, but people got mad because he took his shirt probably off. Did suck. I they, don't know though. They got they got they got mad because he took his shirt off and he was showing his nipples and his dick root. Right, not the shaft, yeah. just the muscles leading down. Right, he's a good looking dude. But everyone's like, "Well, Janet Jackson got right. fined for showing her titty in Tampa, you know, at the Super Bowl that was in Tampa in 2004." Same thing. Mm-hmm. Pro titty. I like titties. I want to see so them both. Jan- yeah, and then I got uh, then I got inappropriate and started talking about Janet Jackson's titties. And just stopped talking about how, uh, you know. So I fucked that whole thing. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, can we talk about that? I mean, it had like a fucking tassel with a thing, and it was it went in a circle, and it then J, J, Justin yeah. Timberlake was like, "Oh shit, I'm kind like, oops, oh grab, let me grab di- this. Didn't mean to do that, but really and truly, I was just trying to fuck but Janet really Jackson because it was planned. I'm trying to fuck her." He probably did. Oh, he probably did. Bro, when just when when Justin Timberlake was at his peak, bro, everybody wanted his cum. <laughs> did you? I mean, I don't know. When you said everybody. I mean, I don't know. So that's, that's uh, maybe you did. I'm not saying. I'm not saying yes. But you're not saying no. I but I don't know. Like if I was like twenty years old, he's like, you know. But did you? You I mean you you were around during mm. this time. You're saying during that time everybody yeah. wanted to come. Yeah. So did you oh, at that time did, was I actively seeking it? No. No. But well, if he was well, yeah, but you, if he was handing him. if he was handing it out, like I'd take a vial. Like, that's a good kid, man. That's gonna be a good looking kid. He's not gonna get bullied. He's gonna dance. He's gonna sing well. I don't know. Seems like a smart guy. Seems like a smart guy. Maybe it's a bad load, but I you don't know these things, but I'm just saying. Sure. All, all the girls but how are you gonna make a kid with him? Give it to You're someone fuck else. Somebody and then pour it in. And we we don't even have to fuck, I could just pour it in. Well, you could. And who would turn it down, right? All right. I'm a, that's what I've been saying. No, no. It's not what you said. Everybody <laughs> wanted to come. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. <sighs> oh, shit. Yeah. I literally, at one, at one point, I was like, you know, the FCC, just they just don't see women's breasts and men's breasts the same it's just different and then I'm literally the next second I go nobody I'm, does I'm pro nobody titties does. I'm pro titties I want to see more of them I was like Jesus Christ I'm pro all titties I'm pro, pro titties. bare body I'm pro poppy titty out you poppy titty out yeah men female whatever you pop that titty out hey hey uh, on your flight on your flight when you're when you're downloading some shit for your iPad or your MacBook to watch huh Abducted in plain sight. Oh yeah, I saw that. I, uh, I thought about that. When you it. watch this, we'll talk about We're it next week it. then, because you're gonna watch this and you're gonna get about forty five minutes in and you're gonna go, "What the fuck is happening? The fuck is happening right now?" In a now? good way or a bad oh, way? Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was atrocious. Yeah. It was horrible. These parents were absolutely Neanderthals. It was awesome. Everything about it was awesome. Oh, yeah. 
It's definitely, I saw it, and I was like, oh, I'll have to watch it at some point. Oh, yeah, no, no, watch it on the flight. That way we can talk about it next week, because your jaw will drop. Yeah, I'll see if I can, uh, if I can download it before we leave. I just want to, to I want to uh, If not, I should have a day or two to watch at least. I can at least try to watch an episode before next week. Uh, it's a, it's like a 90 minute, uh, it's just a 90 minute, uh, docu. That's it. Oh, that's it. Okay. I, I wasn't sure if it was, uh, yeah, yeah, I it was saw just, it, but I wasn't sure if it was ice. It's just a, it, I it kind was, of assumed it was, uh, well, the series, but it's just, a, oh, okay, that's pretty easy. it's just the one, it's just the story about this family. Essentially this guy abducts this girl literally from this family right in front of their face. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah. that's all I'm going to tell you. Because I want to ruin the whole no, thing right now. What the fuck, man? Sorry. How's the toilets there? That golden? Are the toilets golden? No, there's this, but that three billion dollar hotel. I, I'm under the impression it's gotta have a golden. I, know, so I right? want to walk over there and try to take a shit, you know? You should shit in there and drop a pin, bro. <laughs> drop a pin. Oh, that's right. I should drop a pin here. I didn't, I didn't re-download that app on the new phone. Oh, this motherfucker. Damn it. I'm going to have to not do this. I'm ruin this shit. Some asshole doesn't know how to iron. Burnt up the whole fucking bottom of it, making me ruin my shirt. Are you ironing a shirt right now? Yeah, this is, I haven't done this in years. This is I'm, about to, I'm about to hang up. This is terrible. I'm about to hang yeah. up. Who the fuck irons a shirt? Daddy, you got to look. Who the Animal. fuck irons a shirt? People. I was trying to make us look official this week and bleep all out right, all, the, all the f words in the uh, audio posts. Why would you do that? Well, because what if a kid not comes? Official. Up? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to be official. Trying to, trying to, trying to get on that official status. It sounds pretty funny. Yeah. Though. It does sound funny. Do you cut them out? Beat them out? No, nah, I just, I just, I just drop the, I just drop the audio and then uh, add in a little sensor bleed. Mm. Mm. I split it and then drop the audio. Mm. I'm surprised this thing uh, worked because, uh, yeah, I got no idea what's going on. But she's holding, yeah. she's holding strong. <laughs> holding strong. Just make sure the levels are decent when you export it, you know? Yeah. They look great. They look great. Yeah. Just play it back, make sure it all sounds good. Yeah, I, don't, I, I wouldn't know what good or bad looks like. I just know if I don't see them moving, it's so not hearing me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, it's true. It's true. You're going to burn down that hotel with that iron. I hope you do. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping right now because uh, somebody burnt something to the bottom of it because mm, stupid. They were probably and making now, grilled cheese. It, as, it's getting, as it's getting hotter, it's starting to come off on my shirt, and I'm ruining my fucking shirt. So it's probably, uh, it's probably bread from a grilled cheese. So, no, it's definitely not bread. It's that's what, that's like the only use. Something. What's the only use for an iron? No. Well. Grilled cheese. Not here. Uh, somebody's melted something on it. So what's the food that's situation sure. like? What are they serving there? A little bit of everything, honestly. Um, a little bit of everything. Did you eat any, uh, and, did you uh, eat any crazy it, shit? Like a, maybe some piece meat? Fuck is a piece of meat. Like a dove, you know, like doves are peaceful. <laughs> well, it's fucking stupid. A piece of meat because they're peaceful. Mm, yeah. Stupid. Like a mm. mockingbird? Like God, I can't eat piece meat, son. Uh, no, 
No, but uh, they got some good ass lamb. Oh, hard, they, hard no pass. Pork. Yeah, there's no. Oh, fuck you. Hard pass on lamb. Lamb is great. Oh, it's gross. It's great. Especially on some hummus. No, oh, hard pass on the hum. Yeah, hard, hard pass. Yeah, I know you don't like the hum. Yeah, no, hard pass. I know you don't like the hummus either, um, but uh, it's fantastic over here. It's all nice and fresh from what I've had. Oh, good you know, you. We've just been eating a bunch of bunch of different places. Uh, there's this one cool spot in our hotel called uh, Hemi Glades, and it's basically just like a little, little pub type thing. They call it funny. Uh, the, the description calls it like Tex-Mex food, but it is not that. It's like burgers, chicken, fried appetizers, chicken mm-hmm. wings, stuff like that. Like it's not Tex-Mex food. Um, it's just funny. Uh, but it, it's good. It's like a nice little, it's like kind of in, it's like lower, it's, it's lower than the main level, but it's not really like the basement, but it kind of is. Um, it kind of has this like old school, like English style pub feel to it. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. There's not, um, uh, outside of the hotel, there's not really liquor anywhere. Um, you just go to other restaurants. Like with the, we ate at a traditional Arabic restaurant style last night and there was no, no liquor. Um, no, no alcohol at all. Not even just liquor, but none of that zaddy's old cough so syrup. All the hotels you can get, you know, get yourself a little, a little something, something. So, um, that ain't bad. We ate at a Belgium, Belgium style restaurant. There's, I mean, there's a little bit of everything. Honestly, it's Italian. Uh, tonight we we had a buffet that was like international foods. There was Irish beef stew, there was like traditional Arabic stuff, there was pasta, a little bit of everything. Sounds good. Too bad. Yeah, too bad. So. But, uh, yeah, that's it, so, the day tomorrow, I'll film a little bit more. In the morning, i head over. The races in the afternoon, so I'm not a little bit, just like crowd stuff, maybe some of the finest B-roll that we need to pick up and be done. So Sunday, we're going to hit like a market in the morning, like a, I think they like make stuff there, make stuff and sell it, you know, mm-hmm. and then uh, we'll go, go do the safari. So. Sounds good, brother. Not too bad, yeah. About it. All right, brother. That's about it. Fucking tired. It's been a long week, though. I bet. I Early bet. mornings, late nights. I bet. It's like, this is actually the earliest night I've come back to my hotel. It's, and it's 11.15 now. Uh, you know, I got up here a little while ago, obviously, you know, going for a little bit, but, um, yeah, it hasn't been before 11 any night that I came to my room just without working and then eating and meetings and bullshit, so it was good. It was good. That's good to hear, man. Yeah, I'm sure there's other bullshit we can talk about, but I can always save it. Yeah, we'll save the rest of it. I'll cut you off here. We'll stay on the phone. Um, yeah, let me just uh, let me just stop it right here. Oh, that was a little treat. I didn't. Uh, I actually didn't think we were going to get to talk to him. Uh, he literally, we had nothing set up. That was an organic call. So that was awesome. It's perfect timing that we were able to get it in this week. Uh, yeah, he's uh, only been in Dubai this week uh, shooting on location for his new company he's working for. And uh, we're super excited for him. It's a great opportunity. Uh, and he's going to kill it with like, like he always does. Uh, for the podcast, a little housekeeping to close us out. Um, the Episodes are not going to start dropping on Friday due to my traveling. It's just easier for Oli. It gives him a little bit more time to splice these episodes together because we're each recording independently, and then he's having to merge these uh, these files together. Uh, and lastly, uh, we'll start doing this 
And I know podcasts do this, and they only do it for, if you give us a five-star rating and leave us a comment, we will shout you out on our podcast. Uh, We're going to do it for every comment. So whatever, if you give us three stars, two stars, one stars, four stars, five stars, ten stars, don't know if that's possible. There's a lot of apps out there, though. Whatever comment you leave, we'll read it out. Every week, we'll read them out. YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Music. Whatever you leave, whatever you write, we'll read it out. We'll shout you out. Um, and if I don't, if I don't see it, just email me, email me a screenshot of it and I'll read it out to you. Uh, hit us up on the Twitter, hit us up on Instagram, you know where to hit us up at. So, uh, yeah, it's been a good episode. Hopefully you like it. I'm all over the place because I'm stupid. Jackie, Jackie, where you at? Take us out, baby. Can't hit that, baby. Iron fire. Higher and higher. Bye.